Didion, well-known journalist, writer of novels, screenplays. Here she is, she and her husband, John Gregory Dunn, co-wrote A Star is Born, the 1976 version with Barbara Streisand, and they got credit in the new version as like producers, I think, <laughs> writers of The Star is Born. In 2003, John actually died of a heart attack at the dinner table, and in response to her husband's death, Joan wrote this book right here, The Year of Magical Thinking. It won the National Book Award. She later then took it as material and wrote a one-woman show. It is a tour de force. The book itself is one of my favorites. I'm really blessed this morning to be joined by Suzanne Bouchard, who is, if you don't know her, you should, because she's <laughs> easily the most famous actor in the entire Pacific Northwest. <laughs> you do prolific work. I mean, it's really incredible. I, I'm just sitting here it makes me nervous, to be honest. That's how big deal you are. Doing this work must be, I said it t during the break, must be something that feeds your soul, but it also feels like a lot. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to do this show? A couple reasons. Grief is something that we don't generally talk about in our society. And so the chance to, to do that, to put that on stage is really important to me. The chance to work on this play with Victor Pappas was really big deal to me. He has undergone something uh, big in terms of grief as well. And, and uh, he's not afraid. He's really fearless in talking about this. Audiences seem to really, really want to hear this. I'm, I'm, I, I think I should be surprised by that, but maybe not. So. I think we do a terrible job of talking about grief in this country. It's like, let's heal and be done with it. Is mm -hmm. the, the, I found this book after um, the death of our son. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for ways to express how I felt. And she gave me words. Yeah. It seems to me that that's what you're doing for people. Yeah, it does give words to it. It's uh, perhaps not, I, I wouldn't say entirely universal, but it's so common that having the words, feeling the solidarity of, oh, right, this is why I feel crazy. This is why I feel right. uh, rudderless, compassless, uh, deranged is a word she uses. Yeah. And, and yeah, so people are getting that recognition when we're doing the show. I hear people recognizing What that. personally resonates with the work with you, if I can ask? Um, well, I had a, uh, my father dying uh, about a decade ago, and after that, it was literally the feeling of, I wish I could wear a black armband yeah. so that people would know why I am so at sea right now. I understand yeah. that so deeply. I wanted to get a tattoo across my forehead yeah. that said, Grieving Dad, yeah. because yeah. I couldn't understand how the rest of the world was functioning and not seeing me for the gaping wound that I was. Right. Why do you think people are so hungry for this? And why do you think we do such a bad job of talking about it? I don't know why we do a bad job of talking <laughs> yeah, about it. Right? I really don't know because it, as she says in the play, this will happen to you, right? Yeah. That's what she, what she says. But I, the, the recognition, again, I go back to that, to hear people in the audience say, ah, oh, that moment when something resonates with them is a big deal. It's very gratifying. There's so much that's really, really funny in the play, too, yeah. because she's talking about how nutty she, she got, right. right? So there's a lot that's funny. Um, but when they connect with the recognition of, oh, my goodness, yes, I have done that, or I have felt that, that's amazing to hear. I appreciate you bringing up the humor in it because sometimes in grief you feel guilty for, for laughing or thinking something is funny, yeah. but that's part of it too. Yeah, it's part of it. Victor pointed out in rehearsals that uh, sometimes it's the person who has really, really gone through the crucible that, that uh, indulges in and enjoys gallows humor, yes. right? You know, it was like, they're the people. We, we had some women come in who are part of a, a widow's association, I think, of some kind, and they're fearless about what's funny. Yeah. yeah. You got a belly laugh because you're going to cry the next moment, yeah. and you can do both sometimes. Yeah, same time. Last question for you really quickly, the most challenging thing for this show, despite the fact that you're it, it's a one-woman show, what is the thing that is most challenging every night for you? Um, playing with the, the audience, learning who they are, trying to learn really quickly. They're my scene partner. Yeah. And so it's trying to bring them on board, pull them into this story, and, and hold them. That's, that's very challenging to do. 
Well, it's beautiful work. I'm excited to see it. Thank Good. you very much for taking time to talk to us today. Um, if you would like to see it, the Year of Magical Thinking runs at Seattle's ACT Theater through uh, August, I believe the 11th. 11th. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and tickets are still available, so you can find more information on acttheater.org. Thank you very much for being here, Suzanne. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Back to you guys.